That's when the government is, uh, is asking everyone to file his returns. And uh, people, many people file me, including myself, because I'm in abroad. So, <laughs> so nobody likes paying tax, but we saw the question, he was asked question about tax. And uh, you can see how he answered that question. And uh, who, who is in that point? So, there are two things that one belongs to. So, uh, let us pray. God, we come before you today. Lord Jesus, I'm only an instrument here to be used for you, oh God. I pray that you may control my time, you may control my thinking. Uh, Lord, with that what I say, oh God, uh, be guided by you, oh Heavenly Father. I ask you, oh Lord, that it will not be just another Bible study. I pray that God, uh, you may minister to us, oh God. I know I'm not worthy to be in front of, in front of your people here. Uh, it's only by the grace uh, that you've given me this opportunity. I pray now, God, the Holy Spirit, that you may take over, take care of each and every heart, <coughs> take care of each and every, of each and every need. And I pray, oh God, that you may bless this fellowship tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, uh, Matthew, you can sit down. Matthew, chapter number 22. Matthew, chapter number 22. Uh, verse number 23. Uh, let us read together, say, uh, the same day 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus said, the Lord did not say that we will become angels. He said we would be as angels. Amen? Amen. Not married, nor are given in marriage. Amen? In, in selection, there will be no what? Marriages anymore. Uh, brother Ronald. <laughs> There will be no marriages anymore. Once we die, the topic of marriage, we leave it here. Amen? It will be there. But you see, these people, they did not understand that one. They did not catch that concept. So it is, it is a dangerous thing to speculate about the future life. Amen? We must rest on the authority of the word. It does not tell us everything about the future life, but it does encourage and enlighten us. Amen? Amen. You see, there's this, this many things, I'm sure, individually, uh, one way or another, there are some things maybe you have not come, you know, comprehend clearly when you talk about in the eternity. Amen? When you think about one thousand years, you know, think about the tribulation period, think about how it's going to be like, you know, Coming from this to this, Pastor have explained to us about the future, but still there are some things which they are not that clear, amen, in our human understanding. So we see these people they came with this kind of question to tempt Jesus, not because they want to, you know, to learn, but they came to tempt Jesus just to put him down. But you see, Jesus, in his wisdom, he has some this that there will be no marriage in the future. Now, what can we learn from here? Uh, we are going to face this kind of, in our life, we are going to face some things that we cannot find answers, amen? Not only about future, even in that normal life, there are some questions that we may, some, some questions that we may have, some experiences, that challenge, some, you know, some difficulties, uh, and sometimes you're like, God, what is happening, you know? It is very, very dangerous to, you know, speculate things. Let us just stay in the word, amen? Let us just stay in the word, what, what, what God is teaching us. If, whenever, if we experience some difficulties, we know very well God says, I will never leave you what? No forsake you, amen? You see, sometimes we may experience some sicknesses, you know, and we are like, God, oh, you, you, why, why, why am I not getting healed? Why, why this, you know? And we are worried about future. We are worried about then what is going to happen, you know? Uh, one, one of the days I was talking to my wife and we were just discussing, I was asking, well, just, just no more talk, like, what, what do you fear? What, what is your fear about tomorrow? What is your fear? What is, what is, what, what is that concerns you? And uh, she told me one of my fear is my health, you know? One of my fear is my health. And, uh, if, if, if you watch, if, if you examine yourself uh, practically, there's some things that you are experiencing, you're like, really, will I, will I do this or will I do this? But my, my, my comfort here is that let us not speculate things, amen? Mm -hmm. Let us stay where? Mm -hmm. You know what? Our God say, I'll never leave you. No position. That is enough, amen? Right. He's our tower, he's our refuge. No matter what happens to us, He's there with us, amen. amen. And so that is uh, that is number one, and number two is an an ethical question about the law. Ethical question about the law. Ethical, ethical, ethical. E T H I S. About the law. Question about the law. Don't speculate. <laughs> just, just ask. <laughs> okay. Uh, so after 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 Jesus faced the uh, Sadducees and uh, they, they, they couldn't answer this now, you know, when Jesus gave them that answer. They were like, they were, they were, they were paralyzed. Uh, so for instance, now they came in. They came in. You see here in, uh, uh, from verse number 34 to 40, you see. A Pharisee, is, uh, he is a Pharisee, he is a lawyer. And he came and asked, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Amen? Which is the greatest commandment in the law? Now, the scribes document 
613 commandments in the law. Some are positive and some are negative. Now, to make it easier, the expert divides this into two. Uh, what Pharisees did is that they separated the, the law. is heavy and is light. What do I mean by that? Now, a person could measure on heavy commandment and not worry about the trivial ones. And uh, we see an example of how Pharisees, they could, uh, they could value like keeping the Sabbath, you know, keeping the Sabbath, but when it comes to helping someone who was, uh, you know about the Samaritan, helping someone that is, they, they, they didn't like him, you know, they value this one, but this one they, they don't. So, this, this, this is how they, they, they came to Jesus. Now, which is the great commandment? Again, we see our, we see how God is so wise. Now, God, uh, the Lord quoted from Deuteronomy 6, 45, what did he say? He said, Hear, O Israel, and we know Deuteronomy 6, 45, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Now, Jesus answered and said, love God with all, with all that we, to love God, to love God with all that we are and have, heart, soul, mind, strength, possession, service, and obedience. But love for God cannot be divorced from love for one's neighbor. Amen? Mm-hmm. You cannot separate it too. You cannot separate it. And that's what Pharisees were doing. They were keeping the law, but they are separating. The law that is going directly, uh, like, Touching to God, the, the, this one they are very faithful. But the law, when it comes to the neighbors, this one they they disregard. But Jesus, but Jesus uh, turned it loud and said that it is also not being your neighbor. Now, as Christians, as as, as brethren, sometimes we experience uh, this 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 same situation. You know, uh, sometimes we. <coughs> We, we don't really, really show love the way we are supposed to show love to our neighbors. But when it comes to God, we cannot miss church. We are so faithful. We are reading the Bible. We are devotion. That one, yes. But when it comes to, do you love your neighbor? We are like, uh, that one, the, the gate is not going up. The gate is not going up. Now, 1 John 3, 10 to 18, it says, in this, in this the children of God are manifested, and the children of the devil, whosoever does not righteousness, righteous is not of God, he that, he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that he had from the beginning, that we should love who? One another. You know, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and show his brother, and wherefore so he him, because of his own works were evil, and his brother's righteousness. Now, marvel not, my brethren, if, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. <laughs> Whosoever hated his brother is who? A murderer. You hate anyone? Do you, you hate anyone? And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our life for the brethren. I remember our brother here when he was preaching last time, uh, he, he mentioned this uh, first John 3 16. Uh, that first, uh, John 3 16 is about God, and first John 3 16 is about now us. Uh, Returning back that love to the people. But number seven is saying, but who's but who's but who's had his work world's good and seen his brother have need and shutted up his boil of compassion from him? How dwell the love of God in him? Amen. You say someone need help, but uh, you know, we go. We know you can help, but you you're not helping, amen. And uh, my little children. Let us not love in what? Neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Amen. We, we sing the song, uh, 1 John uh, 
Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth, knoweth not God, for God is love. You cannot separate this two. Amen. And this is what Pharisees were doing. They separated it. They, when it comes to people, just, you know, just imagine someone who has been healed. Amen. Someone who have never seen. Someone who was lame, but Jesus healed him, but they are like, no, 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 no. You know, suffer today. You're not supposed to do anything. It's wrong. You see, you see how they separate? <laughs> I don't even how to, I don't know how you can. And somehow, uh, we may not do exactly that, but somehow, that's what many Christians are doing nowadays. You know, we claim we love God, but when it comes to showing love to one another, we don't do. Amen? Especially when we are in this, you know, uh, in this place, or this Qatar, we are, we are in different, different nationalities. Uh, you know, I was, I was talking to... I was talking to one person uh, previously, and she's a lady, and uh, uh, she's a Kenyan lady. I was joking with her, and I told her, uh, why, why don't you get married to that gentleman? He was a Nepali gentleman. And he said, oh, no, 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 This one, no, 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 I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. I asked, what about an American? Uh, and she was like, ah, this one, uh. <laughs> There's no issue. This one, when it comes to American, there's no issue. When it comes to Nepali, uh, no. And sometimes, indirectly, as Christians, we fail on this. You know? We fail on this. We, we, we divide our love according to you know, our friends, according to uh, nationalities, according to people who we work with. You know, examine yourself in your offices. I understand uh, love is... Practically, uh, people who do you favor, you tend to love them more. Yes? People who show you some favor, you tend to love them more. People who <laughs> abuse you, automatically, you tend to hate them. Okay? Uh, but here the challenge is, as God loved us. Amen? As God what? Loved us. We ought to show this kind of love to us. Imagine how many people loved Jesus. How many people, how many people love Jesus, but yet he loved them all. Amen? He loved them all. So let us not be like Pharisees uh, that we, we separate the room. Amen? Love God and also love your neighbor. Amen? Amen. Now, apart from that, apart from that, number four is. Now we see Jesus, uh, after he have answered uh, their question, and now nobody wants to ask him questions anymore. Now, you know, I, I try to picture Jesus, you know. I, I, I try to put myself on, when, when, when they ask questions and they, Jesus answered them, now he was like, okay, now it's my time. Now it's my time. And, and here he is. You see verse number 41. Someone is feeling hot? Yeah. Yeah. David, yeah. hey, freeze it, freeze it. <laughs> Show love. <laughs> okay, so you see now Jesus getting in and now asking them question. While the Pharisees were gathered together, now Jesus asked them, you know, hey, hey, hey hello, hello, yes. Some you see this, but yes, hello, hello. Uh, I have a question. Now, this is the question. What think you of Christ? Who son is he? And, uh, you know, they, they say unto him, the son of David. Christ is the son of David. Amen? Now, he said unto them, how then does that, that David in spirit call him Lord? Call him Lord, saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand, Till I make thy enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? Amen? 
you know, now, now, now Jesus faced them with a question. Because Jesus, you know, Jesus know their heart. Jesus know what these people are thinking. Now, the Lord asked the Pharisees, whose son is Christ? And they said, he is the son of David. Amen? They know the scripture. Very well. They know Christ is who? He's the son of David. The Lord then asked, how then that David in spirit call him Lord? There is only one answer to this question. Amen? There's only one answer to this question. As God, as God, Christ is David's Lord. Amen? As man, he is David's son. Now, he is both the root and the offspring of David. Now, if you read Revelation 22 verse 16, it says, I Jesus, I, I, I Jesus have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches, and the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and the morning star. Psalms 1 verse number 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy, thy footstool. So, remember the Pharisees, they have rejected him as Christ. Now, they are faced with, with, a, with, with a question here. If they accept that he is the, if they accept he is the Christ, then uh, they have to change. They have to change what they believe. They have to change what they believe. So, the Lord said, that, no. Uh, he, yeah. He would suffer and die as Christ. No, sorry. He, had they listened to what now? This, this, had they listened to what the Lord Jesus said? They would have learned there was only one Messiah, but that he would be both human and divine. <laughs> he would suffer and die as a sacrifice for sin. He would then rise from grief in, in triumph and one, one day return to defeat his enemies. They refused to accept him and his teachings. Amen? Basically, uh, Jesus was trying to tell them, uh, if, if you know who is Christ, then yeah, yeah, am I. Yeah, am I. But remember, why, why are they asking these questions? It's to tempt him. Amen? To tempt him. That's why you see in our conclusion, it says, the result of this day of dialogue was silence on the part of his enemies. Amen? It was silence on the part of, of, of his enemies. They dared not ask Jesus any more questions, not because they had believed. Amen? Not because they have believed the truth, but because they were afraid to face the truth. Mm. Sadducees, Pharisees, <coughs> I can say they understand, but they refuse to accept. Mm. Jesus made it. That's why from that point there, they never dare to ask him any kind of question again. Why? Because they understand, but they don't want to change their uh, beliefs. They don't want to change their uh, tradition. Okay? Making a decision about Christ is a matter of life and death. Amen? Mm -hmm. It's a matter of life and death. The evidence is there for all to examine. Amen? You know, if, if, if you're watching news, uh, you can see how the world is getting wicked, wicked, and wicked. You know? Uh, there's this group in Facebook in Kenya, whereby they expose people who do corruption, and uh, there were someone posted there in that group about tithe and uh, saying how tithe is, is not supposed to be there. This is just a uh, charge, you know, uh, taking people's money. This is, you know, uh, and uh, if you see someone, if if you see the comments down there, you see people's pride. Yeah? You see people's pride. People. That's why I'm not a Christian. You know, people, people, the way they are answering it is, is out of pride. And uh, people have completely, not that they don't know, but they have choose to disregard. They have choose to forsake, you know, to, to, to not uh, put God in their place. You see, we have so many atheists now, so many atheists. Uh, what's the name? Mm -hmm. hey, how, do you, how do you pronounce this name? Atheists. Atheists. So many. Atheists. Atheists. In my country, Kenya, we never used to have so many. They used to, you know. But now, so many. Even they have formed an organization. 
And uh, after a moment, I have a problem. And now you see people are, you know, coming out. You see how, how people are rejecting the truth, you know. That's why it says that we can examine, uh, making a sorry, the evidence is there for all to examine. The evidence is there. Amen. God has given us all the evidences. Amen. In the Bible, it's just that, you know, out of people's pride, they don't want to accept, they don't want to read. Amen. We can examine it defensively and miss the truth. Amen. Sadducees and Pharisees, those people, they, they really studied. Sadducees and, and Pharisees, they studied, they know. They really, really studied, so they, they understand it properly. But where are they studying it? Okay? For, to take it as they are, defense. Amen? That's why it's very important when, when you are faced, uh, when you are faced, when someone comes and tempts you this kind of question, discern, understand, why is this person asking this question? Is, it, is this person asking the question to learn? Or is that <coughs> going to be argument? Amen? Because like Pharisees and such, they are not asking to run. It's just they want to give, they want to defend themselves from what they believe. Amen. So, <coughs> so now we can examine it defensively and miss the truth, or we can examine it honestly, humbly, and discover <coughs> the truth. Amen. You know, for me, for me to come and comprehend uh, about uh, faith promise of I had to, I had to struggle with it. I had to, you know, <coughs> because when I read the scriptures, I'm, I'm, I'm reading because I want to defend myself. You understand what I mean? I'm looking for a way to defend what I'm saying because I'm like, it does not, it does not uh, show clearly about faith from me so far. You know, in, in my study, I'm studying to, to give defense, to defend myself, and. Uh, not, not only that, many things, many things. Sometimes we, we study to defend on what we want to do. Amen? Amen? What we want to do, it should not be like that. We should accept the truth. Amen? Amen. You know, I, if, you are, if, you are, if you are a fan of uh, many preachers, I, I used to listen to so many preachers before. And uh, even I used to talk to the pastor and we, I could tell pastor, no, for me, I cannot stop listening to this pastor. Because he has taught me so many things. But until I came to understand one thing about uh, mission, because uh, you find that those pastors, they never preach about mission. Why? Because uh, they were Calvinists. You know, they, you know Calvinists? Okay. So there's no need for them to preach about mission. So, until I, I comprehend that one, I used to defend. Whenever nobody could stop me, I used to study it to defend what I believe. Amen? Uh, so I hope we'll not do that. I hope we'll be the people that we, we study honestly, hungry, and discover the truth, and believe, and be safe. Amen? The religious leaders the religious leaders were so blinded by tradition, possession, and self-pride that they could not and would not see the truth and receive it. Amen? Yes. It's, it's, it's something that you cannot explain. How, how people, we, we are not here, we are not with Jesus. You see? But they were with Jesus. You know? Those miracles Jesus did, they, they were there. They, but we can't understand how, what, what's wrong with these people? They cannot accept it. Amen. You know, I, I really thank God for each and every one who have made the decision to accept Christ as a personal Savior. Amen. Amen. And not only that, there are many things that we ought to believe. Amen. There are many things we ought to believe in the scriptures, uh, especially to build our faith. Amen. Because most of us Christians, we struggle in the matters of faith. So, I pray that we are going to uh, challenge ourselves that we take up the word of God, study the word of God, amen? Whenever, whenever you are spe uh, speculating things, okay, don't speculate it. 
Hold on what the Bible says. Amen? Hold on to what the Bible says. When you feel like you are dividing the law, uh, you, are, you are not <clears throat> showing the same love to, to brethren the way you ought to be. Let us show love. Amen? Let us not be like Pharisees. Let us love God at the same time. Let us love people. Amen? Amen. And, and above all, let us continue sharing about the Christ. Amen? Amen. Uh, so, Luke 20, 40 says, and after that, they does not ask him any question at all. Amen? Amen. Jesus closed the topic. So, uh, I hope uh, you have learned something. Uh, hey, question? Question. <laughs> oh, it was a, a personal question about the Messiah. Uh, and what is the question? A personal question about the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Are you missing any other question? Any other? Number one is the doctrinal question about the selection, and an ethical question about the law, and a personal question about the Messiah. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, so, any question for the other <laughs> That's it. Mm -hmm. They will not ask that you ask them. <laughs> <laughs> you ask us. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, so, that's it. Um, yeah. If there's no question, um, I will hand over to you. That is. <laughs> Thank you.